So welcome back, everybody. Of course, you know me. My name is Dr. Keith McNally. This is not one of my regular podcasts, but I do have a playlist that talks about this beautiful thing. This is Walking the Path, A Leader's Journey. This is my book. And every opportunity I get, I talk to my readers. Nomi Barris is here. She is one of my readers and biggest supporter of this book. Show us the book. I got the book. <laughs> and like everybody, so some backstory. The main character's name is John. And John is wanting to find new life elsewhere compared to where he lives in the village. And so he feels trapped. And he goes to his mentor. And his mentor gives him permission to go climb the mountain, to go find life the life that he wants to live. Noemi is going to share her story, something very similar, because there was a time in your life that you knew that there needed to be change, but you were scared. Talk to us about that. What is What was that situation? And tell us the story. Sure, of course. I'm happy to share that. Thank you for having me today, Keith. Um, yeah, I was 23. That was many moons ago. So it's like, yeah, that was actually 20 years ago. And <laughs> it was a long time ago. And um, yeah, and I got, I always wanted to leave the place where I live in this small town. It's kind of a, I always talk about this, but yeah, unfortunately it's kind of a narrow-minded small community that I never really fitted in. So my plan since I was a kid to to leave this place and to, you know, to just follow my dreams and get out from here. And uh, so at age 23, I got this opportunity and I got a job offer uh, abroad and that where, in where, Ireland, where? in Ireland, cool. in Ireland. Yeah. So that was, you know, a couple of you know thousand miles away from here. And uh, so I was freshly graduated. I got the job offer. And so I had to be happy <laughs> and, and I wasn't because I got really scared because of that, you know, big opportunity to move abroad, to move away from my family, to leave my parents behind. I was an only child, so it wasn't an easy decision to make. Uh, it was really hard on them, obviously, on my parents. And then I changed my mind. I told my parents, I'm not going. I'm not going to take that job because I, I don't want to climb that mountain. I want to stay here just like forever because <laughs> whatever reason. And so my mom told me and she was really strict with me, not like in usually strict, but at that time she was really strict. And she told me that like, if you don't do it now, you will never do it and you will stuck here forever, probably. So she really pushed me <laughs> to make that decision. And it wasn't as easy decision. I was like really depressed for days and I, I just couldn't make up my mind. But then I accepted the job of her. And basically that like that was like probably the biggest decision in my life I made so far in the past four to three years. Well, it was a scary thing to consider that you were leaving a place that you knew, even though you kind of, you know, knew that it had limitations. You were leaving family, you were leaving home, you were leaving the people that you knew. It would have been a very scary situation, especially at such a young age. You yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So once you did it, so let's talk about how that reflects back to what you're reading now in my book. So how far are you in into the book? Uh, first chapter, but I love it. <laughs> so, so talk to me about I, the first chapter. <laughs> What's going on in the first chapter? First chapter when, you know, when John talks about leaving the community and leaving the place that he, he was born and he works and, and, with Jose and with his mentor that was really struck like a chord with me. That's like, as if I was talking to my mom because she was kind of my mentor in my whole life. I mean, your mother or father is supposed to be your mentor too. It's like in yeah. a way. Yeah. So that, that conversation they had and I was just reading the book and it's just like, like, like a, I don't know, like a lightning struck and it's like, oh gosh, this is like my life. And this is how I felt when I had that conversation with my mom, because obviously she told me to prepare myself and she wrote me a cookbook because I didn't know how to cook back then. I was only 23. It's like, 
she, she prepared a cookbook for me so I can cook for myself when I and I'm going to live abroad because it's it was an expensive country. I mean, Ireland was an expensive country back then, too. And, you know, all these all these little tips and tricks how to live abroad, although she didn't know how to live abroad because she never left her hometown and the place where she was born. But she gave me so many great tips to how to survive uh, in a different environment, in a in a new culture, in a new country, and uh, that that's that's how I felt when I was reading, you know, the first chapter because it it really aligned with my life and uh, yeah, with my whole situation back then. It was it's pretty fascinating. It was like, <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Well, I'm not going to give away any part of the book because you want to you want to walk through and and really experience each chapter as the characters grow, they learn more about each other. And John's relationship with his mentor, Jose, really gets stronger throughout. And he has to trust him so much. And was that really the same in terms of your your relationship with your mom? Did your your relationship with her uh, grow and uh, really deepen as a result of this transition in your life? Absolutely. Um, especially when I moved away. I mean, I think our relationship became even stronger. And because she always she was always my she was always my rock and she still is. And she always supported me. So I think these connections deepens if you have like a real good connection with your parents and with my dad, too. Of course, I uh, <laughs> he was the same. And but the other st- but the other thing I read about, it was Penny's story, like Penny, that she was kind of a misfit. Um, and I was a misfit too in my community since I was growing up I got bullied at school I I didn't I never really fitted in anywhere I went (laughs) and yeah it's a strange and um, yeah but I I could really align with her message too it's like yes I need to leave because I just don't feel well in this place and in this community and I still come home to visit my place I'm I'm in actually Hungary in my hometown hometown right now but I it's still the same feeling it's like I miss my you know my old room and my my mom but I don't really miss the place, to be honest. So, And that's okay. So I like how you see parts of the characters. Um, and just to give the audience, those who are listening right now, some insight, um, there's John, there's Liz, and there's Penny. And so we actually mentioned John, and John's kind of the yeah. leader of the group um, who has the vision of crossing over the mountain and finding a new life for himself. But his mentor says, if you're going to do that, you need to take people with you, those people whom you trust implicitly, because life is going to get scary. And there's going to be times during the the climbing over the mountain where things can happen that would cause you to return, even though that's not where your heart's at. But you mentioned being a misfit. And so I intentionally put the character Penny into the story because... She doesn't belong there, but she doesn't belong in the community, not by her own fault, but because of a deformity that she was born with. And so the community kind of ostracized her and isolated her from everybody else. And though, so at 18, she's found herself in a, in a world basically where she doesn't belong because the people have not accepted her. Uh, so it's really unique how that part feeling, you know, not belonging that whole misfit idea um and then taking that idea and saying well if i don't belong here i do need to belong somewhere right yeah and i'm gonna find that place and so you went and found that place yeah i did i did actually because i think i didn't fit in because you know when you are in high school i didn't drink i didn't smoke i didn't have like multiple boyfriends or whatever that the girls at that age usually did i I studied because i was you know went to university so i was just studied and focusing on my future and that was it so i was just kind of an outcast because i just focused on my goals and they didn't really accept me with with my nerdiness and stuff and so maybe that's why but when I moved abroad and I moved to Ireland I ended up in a place where there were like very similar people like me and at the same age and you know I'd made many friends and it was like a great community of young people so yes I did find my tribe after that 
And that was like really uplifting because I, you know, I climbed that mountain, but I, then I found my tribe. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. For those who are watching or listening, give some, something excitement, something that you're really, you know, grasping onto as you transition from chapter one into the rest of the book. So that the other people out there say, well, dang on, I need to, I need to read Dr. Key's book. What would you tell them? What would you tell them? It'd be the best reason to, to read my book. I mean, it's, it teaches you like so many important things in life and you have that little place that you can take notes and you can do that. Oh, the, you know, the key takeaways from, from that particular chapter. And I had so many, I didn't have enough space <laughs> to write. No, because there's even, it, it really, you know, uh, identifies with myself now that like, I'm in a different role. I'm kind of a leadership for my, for my company as well. So it, you know, I reading. I read this with a different eye, like I was like 23 year old. So it really helps me, I think, with my job as well. So by the time I finish it, I <laughs> don't know what's going to happen, but it's pretty cool. So I really enjoy this, you know, learning curve. Plus, you learn a lot from from it, too, through these episodes you hear that? and stories. You learn a lot from reading this book, <laughs> Walking the Path, A Leader's Journey. Noemi Barris, thank you so much for this conversation. And thank you for reading my book. For those who, who are out there list, watching, listening, you can pick it up on Amazon. Links in the description. I'll see you next time. Take care.